to you by Kellogg's. Kellogg's Cereals. The best to you each morning from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. On my left, the pride of Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, four-time Academy Award winner, Mr. Joseph Mankiewicz. It is my privilege to present just back from what she calls a glorious week in Cleveland, which shows it can be done, <laughs> Miss Arlene Francis. I'm back, but the gentleman on my left is about to take off for Lake Forest, Royal Oak, and Cincinnati. So mothers put the children to bed. Here comes Bennett Surf. comes the James Bond of panel moderators, <laughs> Goodson Todman's intrepid and elegant <coughs> secret investigator, John Charles Daly. <laughs> well, Arlene, I must say it's interesting to hear the Bennetts going out to a royal oak. If the leaves aren't <laughs> off that tree yet, they will be by the end of the week. <clears throat> Mr. Mankiewicz, it's nice to have you on our panel, sir. I hope you think so. Well, I'm sure we will, and I trust you enjoy the next half hour. We have some very interesting occupations. We will also have a famous uh, mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program. And we'll meet our first challenger after this word. And now to meet our first challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? James. Van Niekirk. Is that right, sir? <laughs> Mr. Van Niekirk, where are you from? Northern Rhodesia in Africa. Northern Rhodesia. That's above the Union of South Africa and it's up towards the Congo, Africa. borders up in that area. Well, you've come a long way. I must say that uh, I think with your interesting occupation, it was worth it. Mr. Van Niekirk, may I present the, the panel? Will you join me over here? I will assume that you know how we carry on for the next uh, few minutes, so that I think the next thing to do is to let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, we can tell you that Mr. Van Niekirk is self-employed, and he deals in a product, and we'll begin the general questioning with um, Arlene Francis. Mr. Van Niekirk, is your product one that can be used by uh, human beings? Yes. Yes, I would agree that uh, certainly in the long run we would uh, have to say that human beings can use the, the product. Mm -hmm. uh, is the product now or has it ever been alive? Yes. Is it alive when you deal with it? Yes. Is it a four-footed animal? Yes. Is it larger than a dog? Yes. Is it uh, an animal that is found in jungle country? Yes. Uh, is it an animal one can sit upon? If you want to. <laughs> I think we have to take the question in the context of usage and custom, and I would say you would not find it normal to sit on this I animal. want to do it his way. <laughs> no, 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 no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Van Niekock, as this animal that uh, you're associated with got horns of any kind? No. None? Two, two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Van Niekock, is this the kind of an animal that would be hunted? Yes. Uh, would its pelt be of any value? 
Well, I think that well, here, with your thin. permission, we'll, the, the, we'll use pelt in a very general sense. Yes. It's container. It's exterior covering, we will agree, will have some value. Um, is it in the elephant family? No. Three down and seven to go, yeah, Mr. No. Mankiewicz. Would the animal that you deal with um, be of any interest in the entertainment world in any way? No, I don't think so. You could have a lot of fun with him, you know, if you could get him to cooperate, but the trouble is he might not cooperate. I was so. thinking zoo-wise. <laughs> no. Well, now, I think here, if you're going to bracket uh, entertainment in, in, in the whole category of the zoological well, I mean, World. for the edification of the public and the entertainment. Well, I think if, if uh, Mr. Van Niekerk is willing, we will say that in that broad context, uh, it might have some relationship, yes. You've got to retrieve your bed, John. It does pay to have it, is it? Um, do you, in effect, uh, trap, gather, or bring back animals <laughs> of this kind for use in collections of other animals? No. That's a very good question. That's four down and six to go, Miss Francis. It was a long one, anyway. The wrong. You don't trap it. Would you be liable to hunt it if you were on safari? Yes. Is it an animal that has, uh, uh, that is ferocious? Sometimes you can consider. I think we would consider, let's say unfriendly would be a nice word. <laughs> coat that is other than one color. By that I mean, could it be striped or spotted? Or, don't turn that card yet. <laughs> <laughs> could it be striped or, or <laughs> spotted or be a lion? <laughs> five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Van Eekhock, might this animal be in the monkey, baboon, gorilla, chimpanzee group? <laughs> no. no. None of those. Six down and four to go, Miss yeah. Gilgallen. Is it unlikely that a woman in America would ever have this as a coat? would wear this as a fur coat. I think it's unlikely, don't you? Well, that's it is unlikely. Yes. That's right, Dorothy, it's unlikely. John, please. You're <laughs> restless tonight. Uh, then is, Native, this, yeah. is this animal killed purely for sport? No. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Mankwitz. Going to give you one more minute. All right, am I right in assuming that you do not kill these animals? No. no. You're not right in assuming that he does not kill. See right? what I do for my team? He kills. Yeah. You're no, yes, you are not no right no. That makes it eight down and two to go with friends. Is it either in the wild boar or porcupine? <laughs> no. no. Or in not. <laughs> we have established it's four-legged. <laughs> we have established it's four-legged. Uh, <laughs> is, it is it larger than a horse? No. What? No, I would say horses are ten, tend to be it? larger than crocodiles. Crocodiles? Oh, crocodile. <laughs> Mr. Van Niekerk hunts crocodiles. The thing that I think fascinated me most about the little I gleaned from him ten minutes ago when I first met him was how they, they uh, put them into the commercial market. It's, it's so much an inch of the across. crocodile's thing, you know, when you... Them across this way, and a dollar an inch the skin. across. It's a dollar an inch across, yeah. Across. Sometimes... Mr. Van Niekerk, when I ask you a question, may seem very stupid to you. What's the difference between a crocodile and an alligator? Well, there are quite a few differences. Uh, well, name, name one. <laughs> the crocodile is much bigger than the alligator. The crocodile is light in color, and the alligator is dark. The crocodile has a pointed snout, real pointed, where the alligator is big and round. And uh, I say the alligator is light in skin. The alligator is much bigger. I mean, the crocodile is light in skin, much bigger, much ferocious. And, uh, and the alligator is more expensive to buy. Yeah. How many I think, think so. it is. It no, is. I don't think in bags no. they are. No, one difference but is... But I have try news for you, John. They're, they're making coats out of crocodile now. The French started it. Mm -hmm. They're making coats out of crocodiles? An alligator. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm willing to believe it, Dorothy. I think you gals, you know, <laughs> wear anything. But they also, like crocodiles, are very fond of surf stew, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you very much.
Well, let's see what we can do with our second challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Great Stafford. Uh, is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss Great Stafford. And where are you from, ma'am? California. California. Nice to have you Thank here you. with us. May I present Miss Stafford, our panel? Will you join me here, please, ma'am? And, uh,. I think the next thing that we ought to do, because I know you know how to keep score. Yes, I do. Is let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> right. Panel, Miss Stafford is salaried, deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Miss Stafford, uh, can both men and women use your services? Yes. Uh, are they usually adult people? Not always. No, I would say here that we would have to agree in one context at least that it would not be considered usual. usual. So we'll make it one down to nine to go, Mr. Mankiewicz. Yeah. Uh, there was no reason in Mr. Daly introducing you as just vaguely from California rather than... I mean, I, I want to phrase it so I get a yes, if I'm right, uh, rather than a particular locality. Well, actually... I assume that. Would you like to know the particular locality? Yeah. Yes. Well, we won't give it to you, so they, let's go <laughs> on from there. <laughs> in other words, where you live in California would provide us with a clue as to your occupation. No. Not well, necessary. Not, not necessary, but I would say this, that I think if we did refine it in any degree, there is a possibility that would happen. On that ground, we're not giving you the name of the specific location. Okay. Now, your services, can they be rendered, they can be rendered, in other words, equ equally to grown-ups and to children? Yes. In your particular case, are they usually rendered to children? Yes. Are you in an administrative capacity of any kind? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Would you uh, work uh, in or near the studios of Hollywood, California? Yes. Would you have anything to do with the motion picture industry in a kind of a way in your job? Yes. Do you in any way hold any kind of classes? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Stafford, uh, does your work in any way touch the work of Mr. Walt Disney? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, if you usually deal with children and you're in a connection with Hollywood studios, are they child actors ever? No, before you answer the question, Dorothy, I think you misunderstood the application of the previous question. We agreed that the service would be attractive to children in the overall, rather than in the main to the adult, you see. But we did not say you deal directly with anybody. Oh, I see. Uh, Miss Stafford, are you any kind of a performer? Yes. Uh, would you be considered an actress? I hope so. Yes. yes, actually, I'm going to throw all the cards over, Dorothy, because I think in fairness we would have to agree that that is Miss Stafford's occupation. She is an actress. But just for fun, let's see if you could guess that particular little area which would make what she does interesting to all of you. Just for fun. Uh, you want to start with me? Mm -hmm. All right, I haven't a clue. Uh, it, if it's interesting to children, does it have anything to do with cartoons, voicing cartoons? Yes. yes. Is that I, it? Yes. That you is it. Do you play various voices in amusing things like Well, charities? actually, I think we can tell you the rest. Actually, Miss mm -hmm. Stafford is the voice of Woody Woodpecker. Oh. <laughs> and actually, is Mrs. Walter Lentz, who is the producer of, of Woody Woodpecker, oh. but this is the wonderful voice of Woody Woodpecker. Oh, I want to hear that voice. Would you? <laughs> Now, 
a million to all of us from television and the, and the, uh, the moving picture houses, and you've given so much fun to so many people. Oh, thank you. And I had fun, too. <laughs> well, uh, thanks for joining us and once Milani giving us a little of your thank time. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. much. Nice to see you. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which the panel is always blindfolded, and the blindfolds are all in place, panel? Yes. 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 Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? case, a different form of questioning, one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, and we'll begin with um, Mr. Mankiewicz. Uh, may I assume from the general ecstasy that you are in the entertainment business? Mm, yes. Ms. Francis. Are you primarily known for your work in pictures? Mm, mm, yes. Oh. Mr. Sir. Are you, uh, have you been a big motion picture star for quite a long time? Mm -hmm. Yes. Miss Kilgallen? Uh, are you a He-Man hero type? <laughs> Mr. Mackowitz. Uh, would your first name be Esau? Would, <laughs> would your first name be Esau? No, Esau. No, 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 no. That makes it one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Are you about to open in a picture in New York? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. Sir. <laughs> Were you ever a member of the 8th Air Force during World War II? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Jimmy Stewart? Notice I've been sitting up straight. Well, you had, couldn't see it. You had your blindfold. Get these brigadier generals next to you. You know, you got to you got to <coughs> rack it up all the time. Take her, she's mine. Is going to open on Broadway, but it's it's on Wednesday at the Criterion. But it's opened around the country somewhere. Yes, we've, we've, we've been down. We've been down all through Texas in connection mm -hmm. with its opening. Have you been traveling around the country uh -huh. with the opening of the picture? Well, I saw it. Uh, need to say, I'm not been able to see the picture because it's not here yet. But I did see the the play, and it's great fun. And I can't think of anybody who'd add to it more to it than you would, but then you do to everything you do. Well, I think the, I, I, I think it was a sort of a good adaptation. I, you know, a lot of plays uh, don't good, go good in the movies, you know, but I, I think this one did. I, I, I think it sort of adapted itself to the movies, and uh, I, I think it's a good movie. I think it's very funny. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, don't you think it's rather odd? You're the same age as Sandra Day, aren't you? Playing an older man in the picture must have taken a lot of acting on your part. No, no, I, I, she's the nicest daughter I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Except in a couple back in Beverly Hills. You know. <laughs> Can I ask a question which I hope is not out of order, but we all know of your long and distinguished service with the Air Force. How much chance do you get to keep your hand in? Do you still do a reasonable yes, amount of I, flying every year? Two weeks a year. Uh, they've taken me off flying status. They sort of put me out to pasture. But uh, <laughs> I do two weeks active duty a year and then uh, a lot of time, a lot of inactive uh, stuff that I do. When did you go off flying status? A couple of years ago. So that you've flown the big new stuff, the big jets? Used those, to. Used yeah. to fly those for you or not? Oh, that must be a great kick. Well, thanks very much. I know that uh, Sunday nights must be precious to you and your lovely bride, and it's good of you to come down and join us for a little while on well, Sunday night. Well, it's wonderful night. to be here. And we're proud to have had you with Thank us, you. sir. Well, I must 
Smith panel that you made a good recovery and that some congratulations are in order. We'll have another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now to meet our final challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Mig Blummerberg, right? It's Miss Blummerberg, and where are you from? Uh, Sweden, but now I live in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Live in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Yes. Uh, good, when you have some friends. Miss Blummerberg, our panel. Thank you. Will you join me over here now, please? And we'll uh, let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. I can tell you that Miss Blommerberg is salaried, deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Sir. Miss Blommerberg, do you perform your service for a profit-making organization? Yes. Is this profit-making organization located in or near the New Jersey town where you're now living? Yes. Does the organization produce something that is used in any way by the military? No. no. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Could I use your services? No. That's two down and eight to go. Let me say that I don't rule out the possibility that you might have some need in the general area, but specifically with respect to Miss Blommerberg, she would not uh, be available to you for the service. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Mankiewicz. I think that's your rather snobbish of her. Well, I don't. <laughs> and your services are, for the most part, exclusively uh, devoted to men. Yes. Is it, I hope, uh, a physical service which you perform for men? Yes. In a sense, you touch them? Yes. Are these men, I hope not, incapacitated? <laughs> no, these men are not incapacitated. <laughs> not before, <laughs> not after. <laughs> before, I mean. I don't mean after. Neither before nor after, Joe. All right, Mr. Francis? After, I know. <laughs> Uh, may I assume you are not a doctor? No. no. Yes, you may assume that... All right. Uh, these uh, gentlemen come to you for your service? Yes. Yes. Do you wear something other than uh, the kind of dress you're wearing now? Do you wear a uniform of some kind? Yes. Yes. Uh, do you... How do I put this? Are time. you, are you considered a Swedish masseur? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Serf. Miss Blumberg, you do touch the people Master. who come to you, do you not? Yes. Uh, are they in a horizontal position or anything like it? When you're touching them? I think we would have to agree when you say in a horizontal position or anything like it that this is not unreasonable. Uh, would you, would your work come anywhere within the milieu of a barber shop. I will I'm just run out of time, Bennett. I'm going to throw barber. all the cards off. Yes, you're <laughs> right, a barber. Miss <laughs> Blumenberg is a men's barber at Helma Larson's. Yes. Yeah, and it's, she's licensed. And she works only, the, actually there are two shops. There is a beauty parlor, Dorothy, which is why I didn't want to mislead you, but Miss Larson is licensed and, and practices only in the men's sink. Haircuts and husband. shaves and things like that. And thank you for coming and practicing on us tonight, Miss Larson. Mm -hmm. Nice to have you with us. Now I'm afraid I've done it again and used up all the time, so with the panel's permission and with the hope that uh, Mr. Mankiewicz will rejoin us one of these days and that Bennett has a wonderful trip, thanks for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotman. Johnny Olson speaking.